Well, welcome to Sophie & Co. I'm Sophie Shevardnadze. The long-standing alliance between Pakistan and the United States is faltering, with Washington accusing Islamabad of supporting terrorism. How serious is this bet, and what will that mean for America's Afghan war? Well, I ask Imran Khan, member of Pakistan's National Assembly and the leader of uh, Pakistan's Movement for Justice. A new turn in the never-ending Afghan war saga, with the U.S. accusing its old ally Pakistan of backing Afghan militants, billions in American security aid to Islamabad are now frozen. Will Pakistan be now forced to go to China and Saudi Arabia for help? What effect will the Pakistan-American quarrel have on the war against the Taliban, and how damaging will the fallout with the Americans be for Pakistan's own internal struggle with terror? Imran Khan, member of Pakistan's National Assembly and leader of Pakistan Movement for Justice, welcome to the show. It's really great to have you with us today. Um, now, Mr. Khan, Pakistani Prime Minister Abbasi has just paid a visit to Kabul. Now, the Af Afghans, like former Afghan intelligence chief Amrullah Saleh, are saying that Pakistan views Afghanistan as a weaker state, and its relations with Afghanistan are driven by sheer greed and arrogance. Um, how can you strike deals? with Kabul if they view Pakistan this way? Uh, this is very unfortunate, the remarks of the Afghan intelligence chief to uh, uh, define Pakistan's relationship with Afghanistan in these terms is, is actually very unfortunate because Afghanistan needs Pakistan and Pakistan needs uh, peace, uh, stability in Afghanistan, otherwise Pakistan gets affected especially along the border, the what is called FATA, the tribal areas on the border of Afghanistan. So if you have problems in Afghanistan, instability, which sadly there has been for 16 years, Pakistan gets affected. So it's in Pakistan's interest that there's peace in Afghanistan. There, there is a problem there that, uh, unfortunately, that the American policy of using a one-dimensional uh, military uh, solution to problems in Afghanistan uh, has led to not only their longest war, but it has caused immense problems to Pakistan. Because the, 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 the border with Afghanistan uh, is, is very porous. It's, uh, it is free movement, or there was free movement of people. And so what happens in Afghanistan affects Pakistan. So we need peace there, and I don't I find these uh, statements very sad. I hear you. Uh, talking about American policy, back in January, Donald Trump ordered billions of dollars in security aid to Pakistan to be frozen, accusing it of inaction and the war on terror. Former head of ISI, Assad Durrani, told me Pakistan's dependence on American aid ended a long time ago. So why then is your country's defense minister calling on the United States to reconsider the cut? My point of view? This American aid has been very costly for Pakistan uh, for, for getting whatever aid we, we did get in these 15 years. The damage done to Pakistan in participating in the U.S. war on terror has uh, led to almost 70,000 people dead. It has devastated our tribal areas, the border areas, where half of the population, where we are talking about three to four million people, were internally displaced. And the loss to the economy is over $100 billion. So this small aid has been very costly. And the lesson learned from Pakistan point of view is never, never fight someone else's war. Uh, and people like us always opposed it. Um, and Donald Trump does not understand. He does not understand the history of Afghanistan. Afghanistan has a history where they do not accept foreigners. They have always resisted foreign invasions. And, uh, and um, if, if he had even drawn any lessons from uh, the, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, before that, the British in, in, in the 19th century, their invasion of Afghanistan, uh, he would know that this military solution, which Donald Trump also has tried, is going to fail. The only solution, the only way to bring peace in Afghanistan is all the neighbors to sit, to sit together and then come up with a political solution. There is no other solution apart from that.
So the U.S. government is saying that anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of the aid sent to Pakistan was misspent, wasted on kickbacks, bribes, even stolen. Meanwhile, the Pakistani foreign minister says that the country is ready to account for every single penny. In your opinion, like once again, should there be more to this spat? I mean, should Americans put forth proof of corruption? Should Pakistan follow up and show actual accounting? Uh, the aid given a proportion to the damage done in Pakistan by participating in the U.S. war, there is no comparison. The aid was what? They say about $20 billion, maybe $25 billion. Pakistan has lost over $100 billion. Uh, our economy suffered. Investment suffered. Uh, the, the damage done through terrorism meant that foreign investor, uh, investors weren't coming to Pakistan. Our tourism collapsed in this country. Even today, foreign cricket teams do not come and play in Pakistan, sports teams. So this country took a heavy punishment by participating in that war. And the money, as I said, the money coming from aid is a small pittance compared to what it cost the people of Pakistan. So you have said that Trump is briefed by and working for the agenda of Pakistan's enemies. Whose agenda would that be? Well, uh, what, uh, what, uh, the things that Donald Trump has said, he's actually applauded India's role in the war on terror. And he's actually blamed Pakistan uh, for the U.S. not winning in Afghanistan. Now, uh, to and then he's blamed Pakistan for terrorism. Now, this is exactly what India says about Pakistan. And so, therefore, it was extremely hurtful for people of this country, that they participated in a war that was not Pakistan's war. There were no Pakistanis involved in 9-11. Al-Qaeda was in Afghanistan. There were no militant Taliban in Pakistan. How did we end up in a war where 70,000 Pakistanis have died? We, we still have terrorism in this country. We're still having the effects of this uh, war on terror. Mr. Khan, so are you saying India is duping American president into in making a decision? I don't know what, uh, what, uh, uh, where he's come up with, but it's quite clear that the things he has, is saying is praising India, whereas India did not give any sacrifices in the war on terror. What, what role did India play in this whole war? It's Pakistan that took the battering, the suffering. And so to pr praise India, it's shocking for all of us. What has India contributed to this war on terror? And to give India a role in Afghanistan, India does not have a border with Afghanistan. Pakistan's foreign minister says that the United States has turned Islamabad into a whipping boy to distract from its failures in Afghanistan. Do you agree? Is Washington looking to single out Pakistan to deter criticism? I absolutely, I agree with it. Now, just look at the facts. At one point, there were 150,000 NATO troops in Afghanistan. And then the Afghan army is anything between 250,000 to 300,000. So you're talking about almost a half a million armed forces in Afghanistan. And what the U.S. blames Pakistan is that two or 3,000 insurgents coming from Pakistan to Afghanistan are the reason why Afghanistan could not, uh, they could not win the war in Afghanistan. Can the drop in American aid be countered by deals with Pakistan's newest friends like China or Saudi Arabia? Are you expecting their influence to rise now that the United States is on a collision course with Pakistan? What, firstly, what would the U.S. do to, uh, to be on a collision course with Pakistan? The maximum leverage the U.S. has is to stop the aid. Um, and, uh, you know, Pakistan should try everything to uh, keep the U.S. happy. But the problem is when the U.S. expects Pakistan to win its, the mess it has made in Afghanistan, it expects Pakistan to somehow win the war which they are they're badly lost in Afghanistan. And I, when I say lo lost, I mean they haven't won. All the Taliban have to do to win the war is not to lose. So what the U.S. expects Pakistan to do is what it has not uh, been able to uh, uh, succeed in Afghanistan. And clearly Pakistan has limitations. Uh, 
And if Pakistan, uh, what, what they want to do is to take action against uh, these Taliban groups uh, 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 supposedly operating from Pakistan, well, then they should tell us wh where are these groups. Uh, they are talking about the Haqqani network. At, the, at its peak, the Haqqani network would have maximum 2,000, 2,500 uh, uh, men in Pakistan. That surely cannot be the reason why they've lost. They have not been able to win in 16 years. What I feel is that the American policy of military actions, collateral damage, I don't know whether you have seen in Kunduz, they bombed a madrasa, killed 100 children. Now that 100 children killed by American bomb means that this will uh, raise hatred in Afghanistan, and hatred means more recruits, and so it's an ongoing circle. Collateral damage, hatred, more recruits, and an ongoing war. So the answer is that the U.S. has to change its strategy, and that's a, a going towards dialogue, political solution. So the loss of USAID may not be a catastrophe uh, for your country, but now Americans are considering provisionally putting Pakistan on the international terrorism sponsor list, the so-called gray list. You may think it is not fair to Pakistan, but how damaging would that be for the country and dangerous? I think it's very unfair on Pakistan, uh, you know, a country that participated in the U.S. war, and I repeat, a country that had nothing to do with 9-11, and a country that lost more people than any other country. I mean, Pakistan lost more uh, human beings, over 70,000 dead, vast number of them handicapped because of bomb blasts, uh, for, for helping the American, for joining the American war, it bore the heaviest cost. And in the end, for the Americans to then blame Pakistan and put sanctions on it, I think this is the greatest travesty of justice. I think, uh, uh, you know, it is something which is inconceivable that the U.S. would, uh, for its failure in Afghanistan, blame Pakistan. But how damaging would it be, though? How damaging? Well, it will be damaging. I mean, for Pakistan, uh, unfortunately, our economic situation is not that uh, strong right now. Uh, the country is, uh, is actually going through an economic crisis. So uh, American sanctions would be damaging. But, I mean, is this uh, justice? Is it fair? Is this how a uh, U.S. Should, would use a country like a tissue paper and when it thinks it doesn't need it anymore, it just casts it away. I think it's, uh, it's very immoral. All right, Mr. Khan, we're going to take a short break right now. When we're back, we'll continue talking to Imran Khan, member of Pakistan's National Assembly and leader of Pakistan Movement for Justice, discussing tensions with Afghanistan and how this affects the power balance in the region. Stay with us. With Imran Khan, member of Pakistan's National Assembly and leader of Pakistan Movement for Justice, discussing Islamabad's faltering relations with the United States and their impact on the Afghan peace process. Um, Mr. Khan, you said that Pakistan should fight terrorism for its own sake. Is Pakistan fighting terrorism for somebody else at the present moment? Well, it started, Pakistan started off uh, fighting the U.S. war. I mean, there was no as I said, there were no Al-Qaeda in Pakistan. There were no militant Taliban in Pakistan. We did not have the terrorism. We had sectarian terrorism, but that was just uh, nothing compared to what happened once we joined the U.S. war on terror after 9-11. And then we had a spate of suicide bombing, which was more than in any other country. I mean, Pakistan suffered... Uh, 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 the sort of terrorism which no other country suffered. And there was a point in 2010-11 where, uh, you know, the people were worried about the future of our country. We were falling apart. 
So it was thanks to our security forces that they eventually controlled uh, this uh, fanaticism and terrorism, which was because we were considered collaborators with the Americans. So all the anti-Americanism uh, uh, turned against Pakistan. So people were attacking Pakistan's security forces because they thought we were collaborating with the U.S. So the anger against the U.S. was uh, borne by, the brunt was borne by Pakistan. Afghan politicians are openly saying that Pakistan is supporting the Taliban. It's become somewhat of an open secret, and even some former Pakistani officials are admitting to that, like Musharraf even. How can Pakistan be fighting terrorists with one hand and then supporting them with another? Well, there are two different things. One are uh, the, the so-called Taliban who are attacking Pakistan. Uh, Pakistani forces, security forces, who are indulging in terrorism in Pakistan. On the other hand are the Afghan Taliban, who are fighting in Afghanistan. Now what, uh, what Pakistan says is that the terrorism coming into Pakistan is from Afghanistan, and Afghanistan is saying that the uh, th uh, terrorism coming into Afghanistan, or that they cannot win in Afghanistan because of the insurgents, uh, which is Afghan Taliban, going in f from Pakistani borders. My point is that uh, clearly, first of all, there's a huge uh, part of Afghanistan, some say 40 percent, some say 50 percent, which is not in the control of the Afghan government. So why would all the, these Taliban have to come to Pakistan if there is so much uh, space available for them to operate from within Afghanistan? That's number one point. Number two, given that there is not going to be peace in Afghanistan un unless there is a political settlement. So should not the Afghan government and the Americans be telling Pakistan to use their influence on the Afghan Taliban to get them for peace talks? So surely Pakistan's role right now should not be trying uh, killing more people and creating more problems for, uh, for a country that has taken the most beating, most suffering in the war on ter terror, Rather, it should be helping in the dialogue and the peace process with its influence on the Afghan Taliban. Is Pakistan actually capable of getting its multiple militant groups under control on the Afghan border and in Kashmir? The international community is saying that Pakistan tolerates militants, but does Pakistan have enough strength to eradicate them if, if you wanted to? I mean, the Pakistani Taliban are even listing you and your family as targets. Can they be stopped? Uh, the Pakistan Taliban have, uh, their strength has been greatly reduced. Uh, ever since the uh, American footprint reduced in Afghanistan, the level of fanaticism went down in our country. No longer were, were Pakistani security forces supposed to be collaborators of the Americans. Hence, uh, the uh, recruitment for Pakistani Taliban went down and the fanaticism went down. And so Pakistani security forces have more or less controlled uh, what is called the TTP, the Pakistan Taliban. Problem is in Afghanistan now. <clears throat> if Afghanistan is secure, settled, stable, then there would be peace in Pakistan. Uh, the problem is that because Afghanistan is unsettled, we keep having attacks from Afghanistan on the Pakistani soil right now. Because the Pakistani forces have controlled the Pakistani areas, more or less now. There, there are still incidents, but much fewer. Uh, problem in Kashmir, that the, the, for the last 25 years, there are almost 600 to 700,000 Indian troops in Kashmir. There are violations of human rights. The local population has turned against the Indian army. Uh, the, the people have risen up against India in peaceful protests. Now, India blames Pakistan for what is going on in Kashmir. In Kashmir, it is an indigenous struggle. This is not a struggle fueled by Pakistan. Uh, uh, why don't they give the Kashmiris right to decide what they want, what is their democratic right to decide their future? But they do not give them that right. They are using the forces to suppress that uh, 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 democratic freedom struggle. And they blame Pakistan for what is going on in Kashmir which again is unfair. Now, so we have two uh, uh, fronts. One is India, blaming all what is happening in Kashmir to, on Pakistan. 
The other is the U.S. and the Afghan government blaming for the instability uh, in Afghanistan on Pakistan. That's what the problem with Pakistan right now. Unfortunately, where Pakistan has failed, we did not project our point of view internationally on the diplomatic level. We have failed to really uh, project what is happening in Kashmir. And at the same time, the sacrifices Pakistan has given in the U.S. war on terror, uh, and Pakistan is not responsible for what is happening in Afghanistan. You have said that if hundreds of thousands of NATO troops couldn't change the situation in Afghanistan, additional troops the U.S. is sending there annually is only going to prolong the agony. Um, do you mean to say that Afghanistan is finished as a state and should be left alone, die peacefully? No, not at all. I think Afghanistan is, has a very proud history. Its people have suffered more than probably uh, any other country because they've been suffering almost uh, 40 years. They've been suffering this uh, conflict, strife, instability. Uh, and so if any people deserve peace, it's people of Afghanistan. And the only way that can be achieved is if all the neighbors sit, sit on the table and bring the Afghan Taliban and the Afghan government on the table. That's the only way. Unfortunately, there is a... The, uh, until very recently, the Americans were not willing to talk to the Afghan Taliban. Only now there is, they have accepted that there should be dialogue. But this one-dimensional policy of, uh, of, of just using military means to achieve peace, it had failed a long time back. There was a time when Obama came to power, and, there was, uh, and Holbrook was the, the rep in Afghanistan, and he almost got the Taliban to sit uh, on the table for a dialogue. But unfortunately, the surge uh, spearheaded by uh, uh, Patriots, that surge uh, is what sabotaged this peace talks, and actually that led to more bloodshed. Now, uh, Trump initially tried the same thing again, hoping that, you know, by attacking the Taliban, he would bring them to the table, but that's failed. And now I think there is a consensus everywhere that the only way peace can be achieved in Afghanistan is through dialogue and all neighbors sitting on the table. But that's the most important thing, to, save, uh, to help the people of Afghanistan. So, um, Hamid Karzai told me in a recent interview that Pakistan's policy towards his country is defined by its rivalry with India. Why is it so bad for Pakistan if Afghanistan becomes India's friend? Well, it's because uh, uh, the signals coming from India are extremely aggressive. Ever since Mr. Narendra Modi's uh, prime ministership, uh, India has stanced towards Pakistan as uh, not only aggressive, but the whole uh, 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 their foreign policy is to isolate Pakistan. And, and uh, some of us in this country think, that they even would, would, wouldn't mind Pakistan splitting, you know, uh, breaking away Balochistan from, uh, from the rest of the country. So clearly, Pakistan is worried that if India, on, if they face India on two fronts, meaning, you know, long uh, eastern border, and then if, if Afghanistan becomes uh, uh, an Indian satellite, which is the big fear with the Pakistan security, uh, security forces, then Pakistan is, is struggling on two fronts. So it's out of this insecurity that uh, uh, Hamid Karzai is right. The policy is, uh, 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 is determined by uh, security issues, yes. So both countries, India and Pakistan, seeing how tense their relations are, have military plans for a conflict. Recently, Pakistan adopted a doctrine of using low-yield nuclear weapons in case of a major war with India. Is Islamabad really ready to use nuclear weapons on the Indian subcontinent? Uh, that is the nightmare scenario, and that's why it's very important to resolve our differences, uh, India and Pakistan, to sit on a table and have some sort of a roadmap to resolve their issues. Problem is, uh, I repeat again, uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, his policy ever since he's come into power, it's extremely aggressive and it is hostile towards Pakistan, which obviously Pakistan being much smaller than India, it has made the country very insecure. The governments are insecure, 
uh, our security establishment is insecure, bearing in mind that we are two nuclear armed countries, the best way is that we sit down and resolve our differences. But unfortunately, so far, Indian's response has been arrogant and very aggressive. And uh, whatever happens, the moment any sort of uh, talk start or have in the past, one terrorist incident then derails the whole process. We are back to square one. What we really need is a strong, determined leadership in both the countries, uh, a, a leadership that has the ability to take the pressure from, the, from that small lobby in both countries which does not want peace. And, and come what may, whatever happens, whatever little incidents happen, the, the two countries stick to a road map of peace. Uh, and the peace has to be a resolution of the Kashmir issue. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, at the moment, I don't see that dialogue happening. But in the future, it is the only solution that the two countries sit together and resolve this uh, issue of Kashmir so that we can uh, live side by side as civilized neighbors. All right, Mr. Khan, thank you very much for this interview. Good luck with the elections. We were talking to Imran Khan, member of Pakistan's National Assembly and leader of Pakistan Movement for Justice, discussing the rift between Islamabad and Washington and its implications for the peace process in Afghanistan. That's it for this edition of Sophie and Co. I'll see you next time.